What is good, y'all? SGG Game, man. It's your boy, Smooth Guy Game, aka Coach Sly Cooper. Back with another Indianapolis Colts rebuild video, baby. And today we are getting into Super Bowl Sunday as we are heading down to the all right city of Dallas. <laughs> Sorry, Cowboys fans, to go ahead and take on the Dallas Cowboys. So, not only do they get to play in front of their home crowd, so that's a much needed home field advantage. So, to give us some advantage and some luck in this game, man, leave a like down below. If you guys want to see our team win, comment. Uh, things that you were liking about the series and let me know that you guys are ready for the game as well subscribe if you're brand new to share this thing out to more people man road to 1k we're gonna go and go get it now here we got the media questions of the day everybody or every coach's dream is to hoist the lombardi trophy and confetti rains down you have a chance to do that for the first time this week of course that thing means everything to me i'm not gonna say it's just the beginning because obviously you know we don't know if the dynasty is being built yet but it does mean everything to do your rookie head coach and go ahead and come into this bit and almost have a chance to hoist the lombardi already now we have to come back and bring our A game. But before we do, we're going to look at a couple things here. Of course, we have the awards finally coming out. You have the MVP voting, which Jonathan Taylor ended up finishing second in. Anthony Richardson ended up finishing seventh in voting. So two players on the list there, but they do give it to Tua Tunga Baloya. As your boy goes in and wins coach of the year, of course, 16-1 record, 16-game winning streak. You knew it was probably coming to me. So now for Rook, uh, Offensive Player of the Year, though, Jonathan Taylor will go ahead and take care of that one. So nothing for two of there going back to back with MVP and Offensive Player. The Offensive Player of the Year will be Logan Wilson. As we have Samson and Bukum finish fourth on the list here uh, behind Judon and TJ Watt. Kenny Moore Jr. also got on the list at seven with all the interceptions he had. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to a division rival here with Travis Stewart. Didn't have too many rookies on our team make any impacts on offense, but on defense, we have four different people crack the tops in here. Nobody wins it as it goes to LaMichael McClue, McCullough, McCullough, you, McCullough, you. I think that's what we'll go with with the, another division opponent with the Jags. But Vince, Juan, um, Bell, I mean, all them guys ended up making it on the list there, at least for us. Uh, Jalen Jackson, too, as well. The quarterback, obviously going to two and halfback. You know, we're going Jonathan Taylor. Uh, receiver Tyreek, as we didn't really have too many receivers kind of ball out for us. O line, so we were able to get two of our guys up there in the top 10 fries and quit Nelson. D line, Samson and Buku, though. I thought they would get into the tackle for lost man, DeForest Butner, but he ended up finishing fifth somehow. Best linebacker, looks like it goes to Matthew Judon. Best DB, Kenny Moore Jr. As Vince Anthony finishes sixth in the voting down there. As a rookie, and then Matt Gay finishes second for best kicker behind Daniel Carlson of the Raiders. And then on the NFC side, we go ahead and let that run in the background. Uh, let me know how you guys are feeling about the season, man. I feel like we kind of came out, awarded out, star studded out. I just wish we could have seen how many of our players actually ended up making the Pro Bowl. If I had to guess, you know, at least, I mean, I think Jonathan Taylor made it for sure. Uh, maybe Kyle Pitts cracked it. I think Richardson deserved it a little bit. I think most of our players, though, would come on the defensive side of the ball. Maybe a couple offensive linemen, too. Well, probably weren't, you know, two stars studied out. As you see, the Cardinals go ahead and sweep the Rookie of the Year uh, award voting there on the NFC side. CMC hitting that best running back, of course. CD Lamb, who we're about to go after go face, is a getting best receiver. Uh, as that team, they're going to have their weapons. They got a great arm with Dak Prescott. They got a good running back um, running behind him. They got three good really weapons at receiver. They've got a tight end that's okay and a defense that's even phenomenal. I mean, Darren Bland won best DB. So we're going to have our luck cut out for us on this one, man, as far as offense and defense. We're going to take a deeper dive into their roster here in a second. But of course, we got a couple upgrades heading into the game. Jonathan Taylor getting one as we go to upgrade his receiving back, as I'm sure we'll probably look to throw that ball to him if we possibly can. And then we have Will Fries too, as well. Working on our guards here. Kind of get this pass pro up. I'm tired of getting sacked every time I drop back. Needs an offensive line that can help out in that pass protection. Give us some time to be in that pocket and throw. Alec Pierce, the man, the myth, the one to three time legend. Going and getting another upgrade here. Where we will just kind of spend it on his playmaking. Just making sure that he can do something with the ball when he does get into his hands. Make even more plays for us. Plus three to his juke. And then Juan Barrett, the rookie. Getting a little upgrade here. Heading into the final game of the season. He's... Upgraded phenomenally, 73 on the block shed, 84 on his finesse move, 66 on the power move. So definitely more of a speed rusher uh, guy for us. So of course, we're just going to keep upgrading that archetype, getting more and more on that speed rushing. So plus one to the finesse moves. Now, of course, we have an injury with KJ Hamler going into the game. They also will be without wide receiver Jalen Tolbert. So that kind of shortens them up a little bit. But we'll get a full look at the roster here as they have three 99s on the roster with Zach Martin, Michael Parsons, and CeeDee Lamb. Dak ain't too far behind with the 97. 95 there with Tyron Smith. So the team is 90 out. 
as they've got weapons all over the place. Tony Pollard in the backfield is a 90. Backing him up is Deuce Vaughn at 72 overall. Uh, CD, Brandon Cooks, Michael Gallup well, as their top three. And obviously, they'll be missing Tolbert, so we don't have to worry about that. But still, top three is good with Jake Ferguson. We saw what he did in the postseason. So, I mean, let's hope that he doesn't do the same thing to us and is the only one that comes to play. And the offensive line, that's pretty good. Obviously, we'll attack that right tackle a little bit. Defensive line, though, is nothing to play with. Demarcus Lawrence on one side, Michael Parsons on the other. Also, Odizinga up the middle. Uh, they got Zimes there coming off the left outside linebacker edge. Up the middle, they got Leighton Van Esch, Marquise Bell, the older brother of uh, Manny Bell, and then Damon Clark over on the right side. Trayvon Diggs, Darren Bland, Stephon Gilmore. What more do I have to say about a secondary other than that? And then top it off with Malik Cooker and Donovan Wilson on top of them at safety pause. I mean, we're going to have to ball out here today. We're going to have to have our offense on our A game. Jonathan Taylor's got to carry because uh, I don't know if the passing game is going to be able to overcome those five star studded DBs in the secondary. I feel like that could spell an end for Kyle Pitts. That could shut down Michael Pittman. We're going to be really looking for first man open, which could be our running back even in the passing game. So, Matchup against uh, black quarterbacks yet again, as you see, it's been more and more likely happening here in the NFL as that boy, Anthony Richardson, will look to come into his first ever Super Bowl coming off a rookie season that he got injured, facing off against the man that has not been able to beat the choke allegations. No pause on that one as Dak Prescott looks to come in and not choke again on his Colts defense. Set back to return the opening kickoff is Robert Woods. Has not done it all season, as KJ Hamler has done a great job back there returning kicks. But as we all know, he is injured, so we will have to go to the next man up. So losing a little bit of speed there. I don't want to expect any kind of special teams touchdowns today. Maybe not no excitement, but only time will tell as we go ahead and get the Super Bowl kicked off. Here is the first opening kickoff. We'll go back to Woods, and you know the Colts are taught to bring it out. So they're going to go ahead and run to the right side and get taken down for the first tackle. And as Anthony Richardson gets brought onto the field, we'll go ahead and switch things over to Smooth TV. Thank you for that smooth transition as we go ahead and jump into the game here. Anthony Richardson coming off of a fantastic season. We talked about his numbers every postseason. We don't need to anymore. But we'll see what he brings here today in a Super Bowl against a very stout and good Dallas Cowboys defense here. So they're going to start it out on the ground as Micah Parsons already bringing the boom. Straight up suplex tackles Zach Moss into the dirt. But they're going to come right back with the classic triple option here. Jonathan Taylor with a big time run going to the outside and getting a 22-yard gain there to get him up to the 44. Still on their side of the field, but that's a huge gain to go ahead and start off the game and a good way to answer back after that good truck stick there. As it looks like here early and often, we have three back-to-back -back run plays here by the Colts. Trying to get Jonathan Taylor going. They're going to go with the play fake here. Finds an open man down the field, and that is Josh Downs with that catch. Getting them up to the 27-yard line. First plays through the ground and through the air, both big 20-plus yard gains. And just like that, they're already close to scoring territories. This throw will be over the top. Great coverage there, Trayvon Diggs. You cannot expect that to be open. Too much longer. He did have a step on him. Just like we have a step on this halfback wheel. I'm not exactly entirely sure if that was the wheel or if that was the corner. But what I do know is that was Jonathan Taylor open one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. And hey, hey, didn't I tell you guys the postseason dances were going to be crazy. Opening out the game already. First drive looking dominant. As we were talking so much about this Dallas defense, it looks like they're choking here early. As we've seen three big plays along that drive. That all went to Jonathan Taylor, basically, and led to big scores. We had the big run, the play fake to him, and then the pass to him. As now it's going to be Dak Prescott's turn, 4,300 yards, 33 touchdowns, three interceptions. Three must be his favorite numbers. That's also the number of negative yards they get here on the first play of the game, thanks to DeForest Button. Another handoff here. Looks like they're trying to get the run game established. You know, they say you can't beat them, join them, so why not? Third and six, will we see a play fake here? Straight drop back, throw goes out quick to the left side. And just like that, it's going to be a quick three and out because don't forget this.
Colts defense is good too. The run defense is already stout. And if the pass defense is able to lock up here today, we'll see them go to work. It's Woods returning the punt return here. We'll go out to his left side. Juke move up the middle, but not much running room to go. Second drive of the day for the Colts. Looking, fires it over the middle of the field. And that's a wide open grab there. Kyle Pitts getting, finally getting into the game here. Clean pocket drop here. Throws it over the middle again. That's Alec Pierce with the catch for the first down. Getting his first play going early. And it looks like we'll see, as always, a lot of shotgun here, but a lot more passing here on this second drive as he rolls out. Throw goes out, and that is going to be intercepted. Great undercut there from Wilson. As I think he, I mean, he had him there for a second, but threw it on the back shoulder, trying to, I guess, keep him in bounds. Did not end up panning out as Donovan Wilson. Undercuts the route. This is a beautiful throw on the run, but I think it's because he didn't lead him out of bounds, trying to keep him in the field of play, and Pitts did not attack that ball. So we have the Cowboys' second drive of the game. Can they get this one going on like the first as they're already getting Tony Pollard out to the outside? Easy first and 10. Drop back here. Hand off again. Nice stop before his Butner already getting back in that backfield. That's two TFLs already. Second and 12. Going out around the edge, and that was almost a sack. Hurrying Dak Prescott out of the pocket, forcing him to go to his halfback. For a short little gain of eight there. I'm sure he probably wanted to look down the field. That's the forest almost meeting neck there for them sacks. Throw goes out to the outside quickly in that CD land for the first. Looks like we might see that matchup all day here as Vince Anthony out there guarding CD. He's on him again here. They're going one on one, going right back to CD Lamb, getting him on the out route yet again. This one not for a first, so they will need a little bit more work here. Is it going to hand this thing off to Tony Pollard? Wide open lane to the right side. The receivers are even blocking. As finally gets taken down as Peter Collins is able to track him down. And then with the help of Kenny Moore Jr. Leads this to a first and 10, which is caught. Short of the sticks to make it second and three. Minute and a half left to go. And you're in the first quarter. And Dallas is driving. The second drive is way better than the first. So yeah, first and goal here. Throw goes out. They're able to tackle him down. Trying to go to the tight end short. Looks like they're running a bunch of short stuff. Now three tight ends on the field here at once. Looks like it will be a play fake throw over the middle and the tight end drops it. Hendershot could not hold on to the rock as it will lead to a third down here where Dak just throws his tight end out of the area. Messed up the timing of the play there and that'll basically get them to a fourth and goal here where they can go ahead and try to get three. To at least put some points here on the board as that is Baker coming off the edge. Dives for it and blocks the field goal, keeping the Dallas Cowboys off the board. And because of that, we're seeing more triple option here from the Colts. Toss goes out to the outside. Jonathan Taylor not able to slip through the tackle. Only a minimal game of what it could have been that time, taking out the 32. And ending the first quarter, you can see it's pretty evenly matched here. Only 10 plays by us, 14 by them. It's 7 to nothing, so the score is low here. Now it's high octane as we've seen some Colts game this season. So it looks like they are struggling a little bit. Staying in the pistol formation here. This time not running the triple option, but finding a wide open Kyle Pitts down the field. Wired by himself. The safety won't get him. And that is a touchdown Colts. I don't know how Kyle Pitts got that open. I guess they were that afraid of the run. All it took was one play fake and just looking at wide open near the corner. Throws it over the top of the head. Boy, Anthony Richardson is special, man, I tell you. But now, with a two-score lead now, they will have to keep this Dallas team off balance as they are right back to driving again. Got stalled out in the red zone last time. Had their kick blocked. So now we'll see what they do here. Read option, and that is going nowhere with this slow ad. The Forrest Butner getting another TFL there, or you can count as a sack. I'm not sure which one. But here with the empty look here on second and 12, it's going to be a receiver screen, and that's Michael Gallup going nowhere. Getting <laughs> taken down quickly and swiftly as they come back here on the halfback screen to the outside, and they will get him down as well as I think Manny Bell was probably going to try to squat or power clean that man on the back. Ends up ending their drive and giving us the ball back here. As the punt didn't go too much farther, but Jonathan Taylor will here as he scoops his way past the defenders, juking two. 
as Hooker and Wilson coming up missing him. And Jonathan Taylor is on fire. You see the X Factor is blinking. Him and Kyle Pitts are both in the zone right now. Yeah, the straight hand off that time up the middle. As Taylor looks like he's grabbing his stunner, but he'll be fine. Pitts out of the zone. We still have room for Jonathan Taylor here, but we're going to go to Pitts instead. Same play that he scored a touchdown on last time. This time, not able to get that far ahead. But we'll get us enough for the first, and we'll go right back to Taylor. Handing off to the left side, and that's up the middle. Great run there, getting us up to the red zone territory. And we're looking on the scoring territory yet again as we roll to the left. Looking, fires it towards the corner, and that's going to be intercepted. I think that's Wilson yet again, his second of the game. Oh, man, I see what he was thinking here. Roll left. You got the wide receiver. You got to throw it there, though, at the pylon because that's a touchdown. Waits a little too long, tries to throw it back shoulder, which is still technically there. Wilson's vertical just, he was just able to go up and snag that thing. Leading to the Cowboys, getting the ball deep in their own territory where they're going to use the first play to go ahead and get out of it and get extra. As he stiff arms his way past one, Tony Pollard gets up to the 38, and that's how you create room. One quick run play, and just like that, they got as much room as they need to here as they go out to another out route. Because that one's going to get knocked down with Tyron Smith having to go down with an injury. Keep eyes on him, see if he comes back in the game here. One of their top offensive linemen, but it looks like they'll be just fine without him so far. As that play is completed for the first. Dak shifts it into a trips right. Looking, fires it over the middle, and that's Vince Anthony in coverage. Yet again, getting exposed. Brandon Cooks. Former Saints legend getting things done. And the tight end, Jake Ferguson, is well right behind him. And just like that, it's goal territory yet again. Can this Colts defense hold one more time here? It'll be a play fake throw right over the middle, and Zaire Franklin is there for the interception. Has the biggest butterfingers of all time. Leads to a second and goal here as they will hand off to the outside. Tony Pollard will dive his way across the end zone. As he's in there for a touchdown, knocking Vince Anthony out. And finally getting the Cowboys on the board, knowing good and well they can't have what happened last time. Happen again on this drive. Now it's going to be up to us with three minutes left in this first half to try to put a little bit more points left on the board. As we're going out to the corner, that's Jonathan Taylor yet again going up the sideline. Big time carry. And just like that, we're almost in our red zone in one play. Wheel route just to the outside. Put that ball right where it needed to be. Here we're going right back to him again. And that's two back-to-back -back catches for touchdowns. Jonathan Taylor, the wheel route one way, the corner route the other. And just like that, two big time catches put us in the zone. Now, I don't know how he put that one right on the money, hitting the pylon, just keeping the feet in bounds. But Anthony Rich is showing great poise in the pocket, showing that he can sling the rock. And that'll put us up here 20 to 7 as they are going to do a booth review, as I kind of expected. You know, we are in the postseason, Super Bowl time. Want to make sure we're getting the correct plays in. So I'm not even mad at it here. As I guess it kind of depends on what you want to say. One foot is clearly in after the catch, and the second foot hits the pylon before going out of bounds. So, they will come back and go ahead and give us a score. So, it's now 21-7. to 7. We did give the ball back to them with plenty of time, though. Two and a half minutes left to go. And we'll see if the Cowboys are able to at least tackle on three before half. Clean drop back. Throws over the top to CeeDee Lamb, making a man miss and getting taken down at midfield. They might be trying to expose him here because he is inside on the slot. Farthest inside on the trip side. We're going to switch it up to zone. Throw goes out to his running back who somehow catches that with Gallup right on his lap. And gets enough to make it second and one here. They're letting Tom drip. Still haven't used the timeout yet. They have all three years. That throw goes out into a sea of people and ends up on the dirt. Third and one here. They're going to go pistol. Stacked up receivers. Throws out to the outside, and he's got his man. Can I tell who number three? I don't think Brandon Cooks is wearing. Yeah, it is Brandon Cooks wearing number three. Making a clutch catch for him that time around. And they drop back, going right back to that man. C.D. Lamb catching it off the juggle. I don't know if y'all noticed that, but yeah, he caught that off the juggle. You don't see that too many times where the receiver makes the second effort to make the catch. And it puts them up here in scoring territory where they will capitalize. 
getting the touchdown and not at without cost for the Colts as Quiddy Pay will go down with an injury and it'll at least put the Cowboys back to within one score here, 21 to 14. With 34 seconds left in the first half, Quiddy Pay has a shoulder strain. He will return soon. No reason to get him hurt, so we will just put in the backup as we go into halftime and get him evaluated. And as what a first half of football it has been, 21 to 14, pretty even on the snap count here, 22 to 33, as they've had tremendous big plays, but so have we. That's why our drives have been so short. We fish had really good big plays down the field, and honestly, we probably should have ran some more clock there on that drive, but I'm not going to pass up a touchdown when it's given to me. Now, the Cowboys will start the ball first here in the second half as they're getting back to the ground game. They abandoned a little bit in the first. Nine rushes, 65 yards is not bad. A pop here for Tony Pollard. Second and four, right over the middle. Wide open catch, that's Michael Gallup. But the, they will go right back to another receiver. There's the arm, that's Brandon Cooks making the catch. Back to back first down grass for Dallas. Dak Prescott looking, firing it again quickly, and that's Brandon Cooks again. They might have found their groove here. The short passes are working. Just drops back, quick throws out, not holding on to it too long, finding his halfback here. As a second and two now, getting closer to the red zone. There goes the Colts trying to send a blitz, and it doesn't work as that catch is in there. First and ten. There it is, another blitz, and they're getting to him. Quitty Pay coming back off the injury. They said he would be back soon. My boy just needs the halftime to rest up real quick as he are coming back in and getting a crucial sack there on second and long, making it third and long to make it fourth and long. That's good job by Baker coming up and making the play that time. 21-14 here in the third quarter here as Baker making the play yet again. Making the fumble come out. They're able to scoop it, though. Nowhere to run, obviously. I wish Baker had picked it up and took it to the crib. That would have been amazing. Coming up and making the tackle to save the fourth down. And then coming over here and making the second block kick of the game. Man, if you could give MVPs out yourself, I think I'm already voting for Baker here for the game MVP has six points off the board because of him. As now we get to go back to offense and do our thing, though. Try to go back up two scores. Motion by Mo Ali Cox. Hand off outside. Third and 11 here for the Colts. They need a big play. Throw goes over the middle, and he drops the rock. Jonathan Taylor not able to make anything shake there, so we'll give things back to the Colts here with about four. Four and a half to go here left in the third quarter. And they're trying to get their run game to still work. At least they're not giving up on it. We've seen a lot of teams just give up on the run and just go straight to passing. And they have like 50 pass attempts on the game. But here, it looks like they still want to try to run that rock. And they probably should have ran it on second. Because now it's third and long. As now all the Colts have to do is just not give up a first down here. The throw goes out. It's a screen pass. Blocks do get set up briefly. But after a little bit, they get outran. And he gets taken to the ground. So back to the Colts here. Two minutes left in the third. And it's going to be a read option here. Anthony Richardson taking this himself. The dive attempt by the Colts defender misses. And excuse me, Cowboys defender misses. And this Colts offense has looked good at times. Now they obviously stalled out. Same thing with the Cowboys though. But this offense is looking strong here. As they are back to driving yet again. Hand off to the outside. Jonathan Taylor up the middle. Getting me about a gain of five. Second and five here. Handoff up the middle. That's Taylor again. Getting us closer to a first down. Is, hey, hey, you better watch all that pushing now on my star player. As we go into the next quarter, man, I think they have. Yeah, they've passed for as many plays as we've ran in total. <laughs> That's just how many big plays that we've had in this game. We haven't had too many short plays. Like, they're throwing to the flats a lot, drags a lot. We're throwing down the field if we're throwing if we're running, we're running, and we're getting big chunks out of it, too, as well. as Here's our first drag route of the game, and even that is a big play as we get the first down off of it. Second and 10 here yet again is Taylor to the left side this time. Great juke move to make the safety look stupid. Up to the three-yard line, we have a chance to score here. We will drop back and throw a quick read out to Josh Downs. Back on the board, finally. It's been a long time coming since we've seen a score. But just like that, we'll go back up two scores as it should be 28 to 14. 
and we are in the fourth quarter. This is clutch time, crunch time. Nine minutes to go. The Cowboys do need to score here, I believe. If you don't score here, especially with how long their drives have been, this game could be all but over. So to that man, Dak Prescott, the still that he will not choke this time. The superstar X Factor will drop back under the gun. Lob this one up high to Brandon Cooks, who drops it. Kenny Moore Jr. was able to attract the ball with his eyes and able to make him drop the pass. And then right after him, we forced their tight end to go to the ground as Juan Barrett will have to leave this game limping. One of my best pass rushing defensive tackles. You've seen the finesse move. So he will be missed here as they throw it to CD Lamb on the in route yet again. He's trailing behind his teammate. Just wide open angles here as they throw once again to the drag. Utilizing the short stuff to make big gains here as that will be a first down. Prefer. Achilles sprain here for Juan Garrett, Barrett. So we're just going to keep him out of the game. No reason to like risk next year's season because we want to bring him back to win this one as that will be a catch over the middle where C.D. Lamb is able to make the play on it. They're going to go no huddle here. Coming back to the line quick. Might have saw something they liked, but not too much. There's that one gets tackled in the backfield. Second and 11. Once again, handing off to the outside. That's DeForest Buckner making the play. Third and 12. Play fake by Dak. He's looking all day to throw in the pocket. Going to the corner. That's a great pass break up there. Way to go ahead and shake that up and actually end up shaking up the players. Jake Ferguson is out of the game now. Still has yet to come back as we go empty look here. Trips with the right. Throwing out of a sack. And that will go back to the Cowboys or the Colts. As the Cowboys turn the ball over on down with five and a half to go, a couple of first downs will solidify this one. As we're going to go to the man that is a first down maker, Jonathan Taylor, with the juke move to stay in bounds, getting around the safety hooker too as well. And we're just eating up all that clock. Hiking the ball at one second, going back to the left side, outside. Jonathan Taylor trying to juke move this time. He was able to break it, but not get all the way cleanly. And we have another injury here, this time to Braden Smith. Everybody's going down, but at least it's the last game of the year, so we won't have to worry about it too much longer, as that's almost the first down run. As you see, the second in total defense is getting up 447 yards today. That's through the ground, air, and I think that includes the uh, kickoff and power turn yards, too, as well. And there he is, Turf Toe. He'll be out for the game, so, of course, we'll just let the backup come in. Didn't like I had much of a choice. We'll see how that works out here as it ends up getting us to a fourth and one. In which case, we do have the right to just go to kick a field goal here. There's only two minutes left, basically two, two and a half minutes left. This will be a 60-yard kick here. This is up, and it is good. Three points the easy way, man. We're able to go ahead and get that thing in right down the middle. And because of that, your Colts are now back up here by three scores. It is 31 to 14. Cowboys need something quick here. If they can get some passes down the field, that would be great. And there goes an out route, or at least a slant route. C.D. Lamb is trying to be like Michael Thomas here today. Just catching nothing with slants and drags underneath. Dropping back, Prescott moving to evade the pocket. Throws it out, and it hits off Manny. I think that was Manny Bell. I think it off his head. They're trying to track that one down and go make a play on it. And I guess he forgot to look up, just like Dak Prescott forgot to look up at the bio. Out of the bingo. Now we are at the two-minute warning here. I mean, this game is pretty – it's it's over. I mean, they have they have three positions they have to try to get. I mean, they could potentially get lucky here as they throw this one out and we're able to knock it loose. Here's where the real ball game comes into play, man. If they cannot get this, the game is for sure, for sure, OV. Minute 50 left to go. Prescott looking. Fires it up. Oh, my goodness, as we give up the long catch. Michael Gallup going down the field this time, making the play for the squad. And just like that, they're in red zone territory, trying to make something shake here. Throw into the corner, and we make them throw off the mark. Prescott still in the gun. He's got to do some. Dropping back, throws it out to the flats. That's not going to work. You got to go down the field. 30 for 43 don't mean nothing if you're throwing some off. Flat routes and drag routes all day. Dropping back. Looking. Steps up in the pocket. Looks like he could run. Throws it out into the end zone. And there is a penalty flag down as Gallup caught that one for a touchdown. But we'll have to see what the penalty is. 
Looks like he's celebrating, so it could be on us. Intentional grounding. That's what I like to see. Or not intentional grounding, but illegal touch. I was read the the Bible wrong. That's my fault. But illegal touching. That's what we like to see here. As they're going to still continue their drive, though. Getting the incomplete pass that time around. And I think that should just about do it, you guys. They have all their timeouts left. We're going to hand this off to Jonathan Taylor. They're not even going to use them, y'all. We have 50 seconds to get out of here. It has been a journey. Not a long one, but a fun one. As the Indianapolis Colts are on top of Super Bowl Mountain. We have done it. Granted, one of the easiest spots on the AFC side, placing all underdogs. But your Indianapolis Colts are officially Super Bowl champions. Let's enjoy the celebration. Enjoy the festivities. Comment down below. Did you guys think this is what the score would be? Did you guess and predict the game right? Did you guess that this would be the year we win the championship? And what is your overall thoughts from this team? I think they overperformed so well this year. Jonathan Taylor played like an animal. Michael Pittman Jr. and Josh Downs played out of their minds. Kyle Pitts was a freak of nature. And Anthony Richardson, above all else, grew fantastically through his first ever season actually playing. And here comes the Lombardi coming through, trying to be given to the mans of Sly Coop. And of course, you know, we still got to look at the box score, man. This is one of the best completion percentages I've seen Anthony Richardson have. 61% is pretty good. 270 yards, four touchdowns. We'll get to his stats here in a moment. But as a team, we had have, we have more total yards than them, despite them having way more passing. We had way more rushing. First downs was pretty even. Obviously, we weren't, I guess, either they call it fair catch. No, yeah, they call it fair catch all the time. I was going to say, I guess we weren't just punting and kicking, I guess, because they got goose eggs in both. Got over 500 yards total offense, two turnovers on our side compared to theirs. Two for four on third downs, one for five in the red zone was terrible. They were two for five. There's still a lot we can be fixed, but the fact that we went one for five in the red zone and still managed to pull out this dub, I'll never understand, but it is what it is. As Dak, 30 for 44, 398 yards and a touchdown. Anthony Richardson had the two INTs, but four touchdowns to combat it, 11 for 18 on the day. I love to see it. And then Taylor, 19 carries of his own, 154 yards. No touchdown though, which is kind of disappointing, but. He was able to catch one at the very least. So I can't hate on it. And then we look at the receiver stats here. Jake Ferguson did get hurt on that last play near the end of the game. We see their guys were all at the top of the receiving charts here. For us, three for 104, two touchdowns for Taylor. Pitts, three for 108 in a touchdown. Down, scored a touchdown as well with 42. And then we use Pittman and Pierce for one catch each a piece. No drops for anybody but Taylor. So Taylor could have had four receptions, but not really utilizing the pass game too, too often, but just enough to keep everybody honest and Keep everybody focused on my quarterback. As we go over the defense, though, Manny Bell led the team in tackles today. Six total, uh, or 12 total, six solo. Uh, DeForest Butner, looks like he had six uh, TFLs. Sacks going to Odomingo, Quick Pay, a half to Anthony, and a half to DeForest Butner. And then the interceptions here today, none to speak of. But that's it, man. Let me know what you guys think of the Super Bowl down below, man. Was it exciting? Was it enjoying? What are some things I can do to make this commentary better for you guys? Like, leave feedback and true, honest feedback down below. I want to make sure this content is as good as new for you guys. Now, of course, we're going to go through more seasons. we got to build a dynasty at this point. But MLB, sh the show is rolling around the corner. So let me know down below. And I've heard the Pirates already. What other teams would you guys be interested in seeing me rebuild? And I'll kind of pick from those and kind of see which one I want to, which situation I want to step into. But we have upgrades coming out of the game. Of course, we're playing that phenomenally. We end up winning and Jonathan Taylor gets the Super Bowl MVP, man. Of course, he did over 200, almost 300 yards in total offensive yardage game. I'm not even mad at him. Two total touchdowns for him. So I just think if it would be anybody for me personally, he's got to go to Darrell Bick with the two block field goals that we have not seen all series. But another season will be coming. So the offseason video will be up next. Let me know what kind of moves or trades you guys are excited to see us make. Then, of course, I'll be the offseason on my own or not the offseason, but the preseason on my own. And we'll come right back for game one of senior two and see if we can really go ahead and defend the back-to-back -back titles. So I hope you guys are doing good and enjoying. It's been with SGG, aka Smooth Guy Game, aka Coach Smooth, aka Coach Cool. And I'll catch you guys in the next one, man. It's been your boy, and I'm out for the day. Later.